We are about one month into the school year and already some parents and kids are exhausted from homework to hockey practice, piano lessons to cross country tryouts. It can be a lot to juggle. So joining me now to help strike that balance, psychotherapist and group practice owner, Roxanne Francis, lovely to see you. Thank you for having me. You are a mom and also through your profession, you're nodding as I was reading that yes. intro because you know exactly what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I want to start with the obvious because we are one month into the school year. So mm -hmm. a lot of it is just really transitioning, coming off the summer hours where there wasn't that routine. So that transition, I assume, is difficult for a lot of people. Yeah, it's hard, especially for children to go from, you know, lazy days, waking up late, you know, going to bed late, um, doing what they want, and then going back to being scheduled all the time, it can be challenging. So mm -hmm. it's important to talk to them about how they're doing, how they're managing the challenges, and being patient with them because they might get frustrated. Yeah, a lot of parents that I talk to are trying to find that delicate juggle, the balance between getting their kids involved in extracurricular activities and then over programming. Mm -hmm. Is there a fine line there, Roxanne? Where, where do we stop? Where do we let it go? Yeah, the extracurriculars are important for all kinds of reasons, but you want to be sure not to over schedule your kids. Are they doing an activity every day? Are they busy all weekend? Give them uh, some time to breathe. They need time to do their homework. They need to get to bed on time because rest is really, really important for their development. I would recommend uh, not having an extracurricular activity every day of the week, right? Ideally, you wanna give them a, a day's break in between so they can rest, they can play, they can catch up, uh, finish their homework, do the things, and just relax. Because having some time to just uh, exercise their imagination, the, 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 the ability to be bored and get creative is really, really important. I love that you said that, being bored. That was kind of the slogan of my childhood because I had to be creative, <laughs> you know? You had to think of ways to be a little bit outside the box because you couldn't refer to the screen that right. wasn't there. There were no iPads at that nope. point. So what does that do for a child to have that downtime? You also mentioned sleep yes. in part of that. Yes, yes. So, you know, in terms of boredom, having that downtime, not being scheduled, it really gives their imagination and opportunity to grow and expand, to get creative, to think outside of the box. What would I do if this was a scenario? What would I do if, if that was a scenario? That's really, really important. And what that also does, it helps them with their academics because you know once they are free thinking, they can come up with all kinds of concepts. It helps them with their studies. And as you mentioned, sleep. Sleep is really, really crucial for our children's development. You want to watch for the dark shadows under their eyes. You know, if they're waking up in the middle of the night, if they're having trouble falling asleep at night, or they're waking up too early. Sometimes being overscheduled and not having that opportunity to go to bed within a reasonable time frame can really mess with that sleep pattern. It can challenge that development as yeah. well. We know sometimes there are the late night practices, which sometimes are inevitable depending mm -hmm. on the league or whatnot you're mm -hmm. in. But again, controlling it and managing and balancing. On the flip side, yes. there are some really great benefits to extracurriculars. 100%. So let's say your child maybe wasn't thinking of it. Why should we encourage your child? Maybe maybe athletics is not the thing. Mm -hmm. um, a, you know, a sport, a musical instrument. Yes. Um, a, sorry, a musical instrument, a hobby. What? Why is that so important? So if you are doing, if your child is in a group activity, then they learn social skills, leadership skills, getting along with people people who they might not usually get along with because that will come in adulthood mm -hmm. <laughs> later, right? So that's really, really great practice. Having them discover something that they're really good at is a really great confidence booster for them. Or even if it's something that, that they're not really good at, but they keep practicing and they become better, they learn the, the, the importance of perseverance, right? And, and skill building, it really helps them uh, find themselves in the world, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. so many things in the society will try to tell your child who they are, but sometimes they really find themselves in that extracurricular activity, so it's important. I love that the life skills that and they come early, it comes very early, yes, right? Yes. Um, finally, here's a discussion I've been having with a lot of people. This is sort of tryouts season, mm -hmm. right? Kids mm -hmm. are trying out for different sports teams or clubs within their schools or outside of school. With the tryouts, there are the success, yay, I made it. Yes. Then there's also managing the expectations of what if you don't make it mm -hmm. or, or you didn't make it. Now what, what do we do as a parent to help manage that conversation and help support your child? Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Yeah, so that can be challenging. Of course, the conversation ahead of time, right? We might not make it. And this is where strong parenting skills will come into play. Does your child feel comfortable talking to you about things, right? Can we have hard conversations? 
are you building them up outside of this activity? Do they feel confident outside of this activity? Are you telling them that they're awesome even if they don't make the team, right? Um, this is really important so that when they have this disappointment, if inevitably our kids will become disappointed and hopefully they make the team, but if they don't, they will realize that there's still a whole valuable human who has fun times and good friends and great family and great community outside of this. So have a conversation with them as you're getting ready to try out and say, hey, great if you make it. If you don't make it, we'll still move on. We'll find other amazing things that you're good at and things that you can do outside of this activity. And I think it's also really important for them to understand that you might not always win. Exactly. It's possible to fail, and that's okay. And it's that's how, okay. It's how we deal with it. 100%. With this relationship. Roxanne Francis, please do come back. You're amazing. Thank you always. so much. Thank you for having me.